Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Please hit the like subscribe button and share with your fellow Denarian friends to help support our channel. Believe me it makes a huge difference and I appreciate it very much. Please take the time and check out our sponsor, the Currency Exchange Planner, voted the number one pre and post RV planning tool for the Denar community. You can use the promo code, the Denarian, and get 25% off along with the mobile application for free. I also highly recommend you register as an affiliate today with the Carrot Bar Gold Savings Program. It is extremely important you protect your savings from the failing fiat dollar. They are crashing the fiat US dollar. This is a fact not speculation. As the dollar goes down gold goes up. Now is the time to get involved if you have not already done so. If you have, congratulations, you will be part of the 20% that make it through this. Watch the tutorial videos on your personal dashboard and you'll have my personal contact information in there also. Contact me if you have any questions, I'm in there to help you as well. Both of the links are in the description below. Once again before I get started today, I would like everyone to say a prayer that our president is successful tomorrow. This deal is a huge part of what we are waiting for. What I am telling you is no deal, no RV, plain and simple. This deal with China is yet another piece to the RV puzzle that we have been waiting so patiently for. So please everyone take a moment tonight and say a prayer to the big man in the sky that there are not any hiccups and this goes smoothly. Because, if for some reason this does not get signed off and agreed upon, we will be looking at a huge delay in the world's blessing. Also, I would like to give a quick shout out to Pimpy for doing a great video explaining how Iraq is using oil credits as form of payment for services and products. If you have not watched it yet, go look in my community section, I posted it there today. Great job as always my friend, keep up the great work. Here are a few of today's articles of interest that I brought over from my blog. First article of interest for today, the Iraqi banking sector challenges and remedies in 2020. On the occasion of the year 2020, and in view of the special and new circumstances that our beloved country is going through due to the widespread popular movement, legitimate demands for change, political and economic reform, confusion of visions, divergence of views regarding the reality and activity of our banks in the current circumstance the effects of events and instability in the work environment, and because our banks are the first basic link in the national economy. We must make clear with the analysis and evaluation of the business results of banks 2018 and 2019 and the financial indicators that confirm that they faced many challenges and obstacles to work and we will try in this paper to address them in according to the available data and our view to overcome them requirements for the year 2020 in order to achieve stability and sustainability of the banking and work according to the strategy of the central bank and the applications of monetary policy and to maintain business results achieved even at the minimum if current conditions continued. The structure of the banking system in Iraq. The structure of the banking system currently consists of seven government banks, 76 commercial and Islamic banks, 25 merchants, 27 Islamists and 17 branches of a foreign bank. Banking Challenges and Obstacles First, based on the official financial data and indicators issued by the Central Bank for the year 2018, the banking sector suffers from weak banking activity and low liquidity, deposits, revenue and profitability in some banks, especially private banks in large proportions compared to previous years as well as the prices of their shares in the Iraq Stock Exchange fell due to the economic and financial crisis and the economic stagnation experienced by Iraq for known reasons. Secondly, the total deposits with private banks reached 14% of the total deposits in the Iraqi banking sector with government banks by 86%, knowing that the number of government banks is 7 banks and private 69 commercial and Islamic banks due to the concentration of government deposits and accounts with government banks. Third, private banks invest 78% of the capital of the Iraqi banking sector but it only gets 22% of the sector's assets and 13% of profits. 
Fourth, non-performing debts amounted to 6 trillion dinars, and they constitute 15% of the total bank financing granted, and banks encounter significant obstacles in their collection for judicial, legal, and clan reasons. Fifthly, failure to activate and implement the decisions of the Council of Ministers and the Economic Affairs Committee of the Council of Ministers on government support for private banks issued during the previous three years. Sixth, the inability of private banks to use excess liquidity in loans and financing for projects in light of non-performing credit at 15% of the credit portfolio. Recommendations. First, Raise the ceiling for banking finance in the Central Bank Initiative for small and medium-sized projects and allow private banks to invest in various types of real estate, housing, industrial etc. Second the government takes the necessary legal amendments to consider private banks' debts as excellent and payable debts, similar to government debts. Third. The central bank and the government request the United Nations Development Program and Arab and International Financing Funds to work with Iraqi banks to issue financing programs for mega investment projects to attract foreign investors while granting them facilities and incentives in accordance with Cabinet Resolution 254 of 2019. Fourth, the central bank should take the necessary steps to assign international auditing and classification companies for the purpose of classification of discrete private banks, because without classification of banks it is not possible to establish partnerships with solid international banks for the purpose of financing large projects or to consider the credit rating of Iraq as an approved classification for discrete banks. Fifthly, due to the occupation of ISIS terrorist gangs, Mosul, Anbar, and Salah al-Din, the 121 state and private banks have borne the damage and losses of 1 trillion dinars and a large portion of them are shareholder funds and deposits for customers that the government requires compensation for. Sixth, Activating all cabinet decisions related to supporting the banking sector and supporting construction and investment issued in the year 2019 and previous years and the decisions of the Economic Affairs Committee to support private banks in particular the following. 1. Obligation of the Ministry of Finance and Government Banks to open bank accounts for ministries and state departments and private banks and not limit them to government banks according to its letter 207 dated 31 January 2019. 2. Activating the decision to allow ministries and government departments to open documentary credits in private banks up to $50 million without going through the Ministry of Finance and the Iraqi Bank for Trade. Economic Affairs Committee Resolution 967 on 21 October 2018. 3. Activate the Economic Affairs Committee Decision No. 253 of 2015 regarding accepting the instruments issued by private banks to pay insurance, customs fees and taxes. 4. Activating Cabinet Resolution No. 245 of 2019 to encourage reconstruction and investment. 5. Activating Cabinet Resolution No. 378 of 2018 regarding the collection of government fees in state departments through electronic payment. 6. Activating Economic Affairs Committee Decision No. 272 off May 19, 2015 to support private banks, particularly with regard to approval by government banks. 7. Activating Cabinet Decisions No. 313 of 2016 and number 218 of 2017 regarding localizing employee salaries and asking government departments to localize their salaries as per their desire and not directing them to settle salaries exclusively in government banks. 8. Activating Decision No. 253 of 5 March 2015 of the Economic Affairs Committee regarding acceptance of instruments issued by private banks to collect government taxes and customs fees. 7. The Ministry of Finance compensates the banks that were affected by the occupation of the ISIS terrorist gangs. It is arrested at the Central Bank Iraqi. Next Article of Interest. Expert. The 2020 budget needs to be adjusted and reduced for investment expenditures according to the China Agreement. Economist Osama al Nuaymi said on Tuesday that the 2020 budget will need substantial adjustments in terms of investment expenditures, 
pointing out that the budget deficit will decrease significantly after going to refer many projects and include them in the Chinese agreement. Al Nuaimi said in a statement to Information that the budget deficit, according to the latest available information, will reach 27 trillion dinars, but this deficit may be much less than this number with the start of implementing the economic agreement with China. He added that the budget of 2020, despite the government's inability to send it to parliament, it is the government of Abdul Mahdi must make fundamental amendments to the budget, especially investment, in order to reduce the amounts allocated to projects. After a letter was sent to ministries and governorates regarding clarification of what they need from projects therefore, local governments and ministries will dispense with some project funds for implementation by Chinese companies in accordance with the agreement between the two countries. al Nami pointed out that Iraq can rely 60% on the surplus oil production to contract with other countries, especially Russia to supply arms and set up factories to manufacture equipment inside Iraq through oil, while the investment budget funds remain inside Iraq, which is used to attract international expertise to develop Iraqi capabilities. In all fields, especially the pharmaceutical industries. Next article of interest. A deputy reveals the reasons for the increase and in the amounts allocated to salaries in the 2020 budget. Member of Parliament. Mohammad Shia al Sudani revealed that the recent decisions to return the abolished contracts from the army, police, and the popular crowd and appoint graduates contributed to the high percentage of the amounts allocated to salaries to 14 trillion dinars. Al Sudani said in a statement, Alec Beria received a copy of it. The percentage of spending in the budget did not exceed 70% due to the delay in approving the projects as a result of the demonstrations that took place in Baghdad and the provinces, which stopped many projects and caused permanent disruption in some state institutions. His hope is that the investment budget contributes to providing services to citizens and creates job opportunities that reduce unemployment. He explained that the price of oil was set in the budget at $56 a barrel, warning of the impact of tensions in the region, especially the escalation between the United States of America and Iran, on world oil prices. He added that the general budget for the year 2020 was delayed to be sent to Parliament due to political circumstances and the resignation of the government, as well as recent financial developments and economic challenges. Although the government in its last sessions approved the budget and referred it to the governmental committee, noting that the House of Representatives is awaiting the formation of the new government to review budget and send it to him and that, according to the usual context, spending remains at a rate of 1 to 12 until the general budget is approved. And on the oil agreement between Baghdad and Erbil, Al Sudani stressed that there is an agreement between the federal government and the Kurdistan regional government and is supposed to be included in the budget to be discussed in the House of Representatives, pointing out that Parliament has many reservations about Kurdistan's failure to comply with the agreements concluded previously. Next article of interest. Parliamentary finance. There is no legal way out to send the 2020 budget. The Parliamentary Finance Committee affirmed that there is no legal way out to send the general federal budget for 2020 except by forming a new government, indicating that the current government will proceed with the disbursement of operating funds according to the 112th mechanism until the ratification of the First Amendment to the Financial Management Law. The committee's reporter, Ahmed Al Safar, said, there is no legal basis for sending the 2020 budget by the daily caretaker government, noting that the budget is related to the language of numbers and the caretaker government is responsible for daily spending only. Al Safar added, the acceleration of the ratification of the financial management law, which the House of Representatives voted on Saturday, will give the government the reinvigoration of investment projects until a new government is formed. The House of Representatives voted during its regular session, held on Saturday, on the law of the First Amendment to the law of the Federal Financial Administration. In addition, the Finance Committee intends to present a proposal to postpone the retirement of those referred to retirement, and the committee member Majid Al-Wili said, 
The committee is in the process of discussing the postponement of the retirement of those referred to retirement according to the new law, regarding postponing the birth of the 1959 births until June, while the 1960s children are referred to retirement in the month of September, adding that, the aim of this procedure is to reduce the momentum on the retirement circles. The President of the Republic, Baram Sali, had previously approved the Unified Retirement Law after it was passed in the House of Representatives. Next article of interest, Iran agrees to day escalation amid rising tensions with U.S. Iran's President Hassan Rouhani met Qatar's Amir Sheikh Tamim and agreed on day escalation and dialogue. Qatar's Amir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani met Iran's President Hassan Rouhani. The country's supreme leader Ayatollah Khomeini and other senior leaders on Sunday and agreed that de-escalation and dialogue were the only solutions to rising tensions in the Middle East between the United States and Tehran. Qatar and Iran agreed that de-escalation was the only solution to regional tensions, Al Jazeera quoted Sheikh Tamim as saying after the meeting with Rouhani. This visit comes at a critical time in the region, and we agreed with the brothers and with His Excellency the President that the only solution to these crises is de-escalation from everyone and dialogue, he told a news conference. Dialogue is the only solution to resolve the crisis, the Sheikh added. The meeting came amid heightened tensions in the Gulf following the U.S. assassination of top Iranian commander Qasem Soleimani in Baghdad and Iran's retaliatory missile strikes on U.S. targets in Iraq. Sheikh Tamim was the first national leader to come to Iran since Soleiman is killing on January 3 in an American drone strike. Qatar is one of a few countries in the region that maintains a close relationship with Washington and Tehran with which it shares the world's largest gas field. Next article of interest. Yes, China is a currency manipulator and the U.S. banking system is a metals manipulator. The U.S. Treasury Department announced Monday that China is no longer on a list of countries deemed to be currency manipulators. The timing was awfully convenient, coming just ahead of an expected phase one trade deal between the two powers. Nobody actually believes China has stopped manipulating the value of its yuan versus the U.S. dollar. But the Trump administration is apparently willing to accept a certain degree of currency rigging in exchange for other concessions on trade. It's not as if the U.S. government has a stellar record when it comes to heeding principles of free and fair currency markets. It, through the Exchange Stabilization Fund and other vehicles, is constantly trying to manage the value of the dollar versus the currencies of trading partners, too. It's not as if equity markets, interest rate markets, and precious metals futures markets are free from manipulation, either. Price rigging schemes of various sorts ranging from small-scale spoofing to large-scale suppression occur practically around the clock. Occasionally, there are prosecutions. Last year, for example, the U.S. Department of Justice criminally charged several J.P. Morgan traders for fraud and racketeering in a conspiracy to rig precious metals markets. Yet previous criminal investigations by federal regulators have often gone nowhere, with evidence of manipulation inexplicably disregarded. Congressman Alex Mooney from West Virginia has asked Attorney General Bill Barr to look into price rigging particularly within the silver market which is regularly subjected to artificial volatility induced by large institutional traders, i.e., bullion banks, with outsized positions. The manipulation may be occurring on an even larger scale if the Federal Reserve or the U.S. government or its agents are involved. It is widely suspected but difficult to prove since the Fed operates in secret and the government isn't keen on investigating itself. Regardless of what the motivation may be, it is an objective fact that the supply of futures contracts surged last year in both gold and silver markets. Open interest in gold was up over 70%. Put another way, the supply of paper gold rose by 70% or 33 million new ounces, absorbing much of the growing demand for the metal and preventing prices from rising even more than they did. Even as vastly more contracts for gold exchanged hands, the amount of physical gold available for delivery in vaults barely budged. Thus, 
while gold itself is scarce and highly sought after, futures contracts can seemingly be generated in unlimited quantities to divert buyers away from the real thing. According to Dave Kranzler of Investment Research Dynamics, since the introduction of paper gold, the COMEX gold and silver trading has evolved into what can only be described as a caricature of a market. The open interest in gold contracts is nearly 10 times the amount of physical gold reportedly held in COMEX vaults. It's 60 times the amount of registered gold, the gold designated as available for delivery. Some gold bugs expect an eventual COMEX default, a force majeure, a run on the bank for physical metal that sends prices explosively higher. While such a scenario is possible, it is not necessarily probable. The powers that be have been adept at playing the paper charade to their advantage for decades. They may be unscrupulous or even evil, but they are not dumb. The campaign popularized briefly a few years ago of Buy Silver. Crash JP Morgan was based on a misunderstanding of the mega bank's short exposure to silver. The banks aren't making an enormous long term bet that silver will fall and risking everything on it. They are in the markets with complex hedges and trading algorithms that can generate micro profits on minute by minute moves up or down. Yes, the banks can suppress rallies and trigger sell offs by going heavily short, even selling more ounces than they could possibly deliver. But the reality is, they will never have to settle their contracts in physical metal. Financial institutions are playing in a cash market tied to precious metals, not the actual physical market. The best physical investors can hope for is that the cash slash paper markets for gold and silver lose credibility and diverge from real world pricing for industrial users and wholesale bullion buyers. Or, alternatively the powers that be could avoid such an embarrassment by standing aside while prices reset higher, and then choose a new level at which to try to hold the line. Ultimately, however, the supply of physical precious metals cannot be manipulated into existence any bank or government. Either it's real and it's available or it isn't. The key to defeating market riggers, or at least rendering their paper shenanigans irrelevant, is for buyers to avoid derivative markets and insist on obtaining physical metal from physical sources. Enjoy today's news. Please hit the like and subscribe to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold. Be sure to visit the Denarian blog and find me on Facebook. Please take a moment and visit our sponsor, the Currency Exchange Planner. Use the promo code. The Denarian and get 25% off at checkout along with the mobile application at no extra charge. Also, register as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program today. If you do not keep your savings in an asset like gold, you may lose everything as the fiat system fails. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold. I know what you're thinking, gold is too expensive right? This program is made so low-income people can afford to buy gold in small increments, which makes it affordable to everyone. Get involved today, and secure your family's savings. You can always transfer gold into any kind of money you want, the gold will always be in your possession. The gold will retain its purchasing power in good times as well as bad, the dollar will not. Ask yourself this, why are all the central banks loading up on gold lately? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected today, before it's too late. The links are in the description below. Get involved now. Knowledge is power. Lastly, may God bless every one of us, and may God watch over our beloved President Trump as he locks in this deal tomorrow for the world. Bring it home, Big Daddy. After all, you're the chosen one, remember. Over and out for now, the Denarian.